you are clicking on this video, hi and welcome. Uh, my name is Mindy. Um, this channel is called Awesome Andersons and I will explain why our channel is called that. Um, but I kind of wanted to do a first vlog sort of thing where I go into detail and kind of explain so if people ever have any questions they can resort back to our very first um, video on this channel. So hi and welcome, my name is Mindy, I am 36 and I have been married to my husband Rick who's quite a character. Um, we've been together for about six years. We have two sons together, um, Ricky who will be five pretty soon who is three and a half. Last year, a little over a year ago, um, Ricky was officially medically diagnosed with autism. I became well aware that there was something a little different about Ricky um, and that's what I wanted to kind of dive into so that any other parents who are going along this journey they might not know that there are different characteristics that they need to look out for because for me I to be completely honest I was quite um, naive to uh, the point of thinking early on when Ricky was younger that it was autism because I, I do have someone I do know of someone who is on the spectrum for some reason I compared Ricky to that person and said well no it can't be that it's got to be something else so when he was a year and a half um, I had noticed that he was saying a few words but he wasn't saying phrases and sentences and he, he wasn't really good with communicating it was hard for me to and hard hard for him especially to tell us if he wanted or needed anything or if something was wrong it was hard for him to come out and let us know and I mean you could tell that there was a barrier for a while I just thought that maybe he might have some sort of speech impediment or something of that nature and so I just kept trying on my own um, when things weren't working, that's when I addressed um, the issue with his pediatrician. She had us do an evaluation through ECI. Um, this was when he was two and a half, maybe. They told me that he was delayed in speech, but based off of the evaluation that they did on him, he wasn't delayed enough for their services. They did help in a sense of telling me, well, why don't you try um, different videos on YouTube, different children's learning videos on YouTube, why don't you try different learning apps, and maybe that will help him, because so, one of the therapists that was there said, uh, some children, they learn differently. Doing the apps might help him come out like say more words and so sure enough I did that and he did he started repeating things off of his favorite show is Mickey Mouse Clubhouse so he started repeating things off of that show he loves Pokio um, which is a kids show and so he was repeating stuff off of that and then he started to repeat things that we would say like if we asked him a question he would repeat the question so all of this in my mind was forward progress and also me thinking okay he is just slightly delayed we're, we're gonna have to continue pushing him forward with development and if we get to a point where we're stuck my goal was okay I'm I'm gonna see how far I can get with him progressing and then if I feel like we've come to a standstill, then I will request speech therapy before he enters school. Um, I did want him to start preschool. And then at some point, autism did cross my mind. But again, I have 
someone that I know who's on the spectrum and I compared Ricky to them. And I thought, well, Ricky loves hugs. Like he craves hugs. He always wants to be affectionate. Um, so there was that. And then um, if you called his name, he would turn, he would look at you, he would make eye contact. Um, so there was that. And I just thought, well, these don't line up with what I knew at the time to be autism. He was repeating everything that we were saying. He was acting out um, different scenes from like a Mickey Mouse Clubhouse episode or a Pokio episode. It didn't really come to a head until it was about April 2017, right? Yeah. <laughs> I had been trying so hard to potty train him and was just not having any kind of success at all. Then when I was feeling like he was progressing, there would be days where it was like, he's getting it, he's understanding, he's, he's doing it. And then there would be days where he would regress. And I'm thinking, that shouldn't be happening, should it? <laughs> he shouldn't act like he doesn't know what I want him to do and get frustrated and get upset when I try to get him to sit on the potty. Like, this was all new to me, but it, in those moments, it was, uh, it was alarming. So I started doing a little bit of research and I discovered sensory processing disorder. And in looking at sensory processing disorder, um, what they had named off of for like characteristics or traits that, that people who live with SPD have, it described Ricky to a T. And so I said, that's what it is. I, I immediately after seeing that, I went off of that information and I started looking up um, different techniques and ways to potty train a child with sensory processing disorder. Things were going okay and then we had um, an unfortunate death in our family and so we had to travel and we had to go to a funeral. There was a moment um, where Ricky just had his first from what I can identify as a first full-on meltdown. And I decided once we got back home that I would look further into what that was. After looking up more information, I discovered that sensory processing disorder goes hand in hand with um, autism spectrum disorder. So I started looking into um, autism, I started looking on different sites, Autism Speaks. I knew that the medical field, as far as pediatricians go, they, um, every year that your child develops and, and you take your child in for a well child checkup, they would have you fill out this questionnaire. I knew that there was progress within the autism community. Um, as far as trying to detect autism, but I didn't realize that there were different aspects to autism where from what I knew children didn't make eye contact, they did not like physical touch, they um, did not answer to their name, um, they were disassociated basically um, emotionally detached almost like those were the things that I knew I discovered that with sensory processing disorder being almost like intertwined with autism spectrum disorder there are kids who are sensory seekers and that's Ricky Ricky loves touch he craves it then he also he lines up his toys. He doesn't play like like play appropriate with toys like he will break things apart um, or he'll line them up or he'll spin the wheels. 
I knew something to that effect was on the, um, as far as determining if a child was on the spectrum disorder, but I didn't want to just go off of that. He was scripting when he was reenacting the Mickey Mouse episode or Pokio episode, that is considered scripting. If you ask him a question and he would repeat it back to you and then you would give him an op um, options to answer the question with and he would just repeat the options, both of them, that's called egolalia. All of these kind of things added up and it made me realize Oh my gosh, my child is highly, highly, there's a high, high, high possibility that my child is on the spectrum. I went to his pediatrician, I spoke with her, she kind of assessed him a little bit, I did the, I redid the questionnaire, um, and that's when she decided, okay, we're going to move forward with everything, and she just named off a list of stuff that, that there was two things that she was going to refer me to. And then there were a few things that I needed to do on my end if I decided that it was best for Ricky. And of course, I went through with everything that she had suggested because I, yeah, at that time I, I felt guilty. I felt like I kind of dropped the ball on being aware, being a mother that was aware of her child. So I wanted to play like catch up as soon as possible um so she referred us we do live right outside of houston so she referred us to um the texas children's myers clinic which is an autism center they are fantastic there um, but there is a long waiting list so she put in the referral and then I had to go online and fill out a few things. They sent me this huge packet that I had to, um, most of the stuff I just had to go over and make sure all of the information that I submitted online was correct. And then they went more in depth on my family history and Rick's family history. And then they went in depth on questions about Ricky. So it was very thorough. His pediatrician referred him to a um, therapy group, which is an in-home therapy group. He does occupational therapy and speech therapy. But before that, he had to get evaluated two separate times. And then we had to wait for insurance to accept um, their request for services and then the other thing that she told me to do on my own was to um, look up in my school district that we were living in to look up PPCD see if they would accept him into the preschool program then I believe he had two other thorough evaluations after the first initial evaluation. And then I had a meeting with the specialist who did his evaluation. And then I had an official ARD or IEP meeting with the school that he's in now. So things kind of progressed quickly as far as um, the therapy went. The therapy side of it went fast. Um, the PPC part was a little, just a little lengthy, but we got him in during Christmas time and really it's uh, been the best decision that we've made for him because we have seen such great progress with PPCD on top of the speech therapy and the occupational therapy. Um, looking back a year ago, where he was compared to where he is now, there has been tremendous progress. So we had a, what is called an educational diagnosis, which there was a specialist that worked within the school board who gave us that diagnosis of autism. Um, and she said that she could pick it up right away, um, that he was autistic. So then we had to wait to get the medical diagnosis to see a neurologist and that wasn't until this past April. She basically, the, the neurologist um, evaluated him, talked to me, and then she said, well, you know what? 
Um, I feel like uh, ABA therapy might be good for him. The thing about Texas, at least in my area, it's a little difficult to get into ABA therapy. Um, you have to get on a waiting list. And then even when you are technically accepted, his neurologist wanted him to take, I believe about 30 hours a week for ABA. She felt like that would be sufficient enough for him to advance and progress even more. Again, it's the waiting list and then um, even if you do get on the waiting list, because I did speak to someone, even if you do get on the waiting list, there are times where they try to divvy out the hours because they don't have enough therapists in my area. That's what I've been told. Um, we'll still check into it and see what we can get out of it. But so far, I feel like he's doing really well without it. I know that there are some trepidation about ABA therapy. I've heard good and bad things. And I really think that it just depends on the child um, and also the group that you get ABA therapy through. Um, I think all of those aspects really come into play as far as if your child will benefit from ABA therapy or not. So the battery died. And then I had to charge the battery, which a uh, new YouTuber mistake. I need to buy an, another battery so that I could have a backup battery. Um, and then I had to go get Ricky from school. So I don't know where I left off on my story. I'm not really sure. Um, yeah. New black? Uh, this is Ricky. Yeah, that's just mommy. Yeah, you got no. He's eating lunch. So he's got stuff like all over his way. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Mickey. How old are you? Six. How old are you? Six. Are you sure? Yes. You're four. You're almost five. Uh, but, but I don't know. You'll be five in October. Hi, buddy. So basically what we wanted to do with starting this channel is to kind of uh, yeah, to. Uh, give you guys a, a peek into our lives and Ricky's life. And really what I want to encourage is people to have more awareness about um, others on the spectrum, have more acceptance overall. I mean, this is one of the main goals and why I'm starting this channel is for Ricky to be able to um, live in a world where he is accepted. Um, I, the worst thing in the world that any parent could ever fear I had for their child is to not be understood and not be accepted. So that's our goal that's with this channel. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, my teeth are the orange. The orange? Yeah. You're eating chips. That's one of his things he likes to eat is chips. And this is Michael. Hi, Michael. Hey, He's Superman. Hey. He is obsessed with his Superman costume. Say hi. How old are you? Superman. No, I know you're dressed as Superman, but how old are you? Superman. You're three. Three. And this channel is also for him too. Um, it also be just to show support for siblings who have a brother or a sister on the spectrum. 